Hello there. Welcome to Shine Tech's YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to go through Anatomy MCQs on the thorax, and this is part four of this video series. So, in this video, I'm going to start from question eleven because in other videos we did question one to ten. So, question eleven reads: What is the artery that provides the main supply to the sternum? What is the artery that provides the main supply to the sternum? A. Intercostal artery. B. Subclavian artery. C. Common carotid artery. D. Highest thoracic artery. And E. Internal thoracic artery. So which artery among all these arteries here supplies the sternum? So the sternum is, this is the sternum here. So it is supplied by the internal, the branches of the internal thoracic artery. So the correct answer for question 11 is E, which is internal thoracic artery. We move on to question 12. Question 12 reads, which one of the following ribs articulates only with one vertebrae? Which one of the following ribs articulates only with one vertebrae? A. First rib, B. Third rib, C. Fifth rib, D. Seventh rib, and E. Ninth rib. So which one among these ribs articulates only with one vertebrae? So the correct answer for question 12 is A. The first rib articulates with only one vertebrae. So we can see that that is the first rib it only articulates with that vertebrates there so uh, ribs they articulate with two vertebrates as we can see in this diagram here we have that vertebrae there and this vertebrae and we can see this rib here is articulating with both of them so for this rib it is articulating with the fixed th uh, thoracic vertebrae and the seventh thoracic vertebrae but for the first rib it articulates with only one vertebrae so the correct answer is a for question 12 the first rib articulates only with one vertebrae so we move on to question 13 question 13 reads which one of the following ribs has no articulation with the transverse process of the corresponding vertebrae which one of the following ribs has no articulation with the transverse process of the corresponding vertebrae? A. Fourth rib. B. Sixth rib. C. Eighth rib. And D. Tenth rib. And E. Twelfth rib. So which one among these has no articulation with the transverse process? So the transverse process is this process there that is the transverse process so among these ribs which are here which one do not articulate with the transverse process which we have seen in that diagram so rib number 11 and rib number 12 do not have what we call a tubercle so a tubercle is a structure of the rib that articulates with the, the uh, with uh, with the transverse process of the vertebrae so rib number 11 and number 12 are called uh, atypical ribs they do not have a tubercle to articulate with the, the transverse process so in this case our answer will be e e do not have a transverse process to uh, articulate with uh, the it doesn't have a tubercle to articulate with the transverse process of the corresponding vertebrae so question 13 the answer is e so we move on to question 14 which one of the following ribs is classified as true rib a seventh rib b eighth rib C, 9th rib, and D, 10th rib, E, 
11th rib. So which one among these ribs is classified as true rib? So what we should know is that ribs are classified as true, false, and floating. Also have floating ribs. So true rib are rib 1 up to 7. Rib 1 to 7 are true rib. And then from there, uh, we also have 8, 9, and 10 are false rib. And 11 and 12 are floating ribs. So they are called true ribs because they articulate with the sternum directly. 1 to 7 articulates with the sternum direct. Their costal cartilages articulate with the sternum direct. And the fourth ribs, they do not articulate directly. So as you can see in this diagram here, these ribs 1 to 7, they articulate with the sternum there. Their costal cartilages articulate with the sternum directly. But for ribs 8, 9, and 10, they do not articulate directly. But instead, they articulate via the rib which is above them. The costal cartilage of the rib which is above them. That those are what we call false ribs. But for 11 and 12, they are floating ribs. They do not even articulate with the sternum, either direct or indirect. So among these choices we have here, uh, the one which is true is 7. It articulates with the sternum direct. So the correct answer is A for question 14. We move on to question 15. Regarding rib fractures, which one of the following ribs is the most vulnerable to fractures? A. First rib. B. Second rib. C. Seventh rib. D. Eleventh rib. And E. Twelfth rib. So which one among these is vulnerable to fractures? So fractures of the rib mostly occur in the middle, in the middle part of the thorax wall. So the most vulnerable ribs are the ones which are located in the middle. These first ribs, mostly one to four, they are protected by the muscles. We have the pectoris major and pectoris minor there. So the, they are mostly uh, protected. But the ones on the middle, they are most vulnerable uh, rib, ribs. So among these, the one which is most found in the middle is the seventh rib so the most vulnerable is seventh rib among these ribs here so the correct answer for question 15 is c we move on to question 16. question 16 reads regarding rib fractures the weakest part of a rib is a the head b the tubercle c the anterior to to the angle D, the anterior part of the shaft, E, between the in between the head and neck. So, uh, what is the weakest part of the rib? So, the weakest part of the rib is the anterior to the angle. Anterior to the angle. So, where the rib forms the angle there. Now, the anterior surface or the anterior to the angle, that's where... Uh, the weakest point where most of the rib get fractured. So the correct answer is C. Move on to question 17. The cervical rib can exert direct pressure on the dash of the brachial plexus. The cervical rib can exert direct pressure on the dash of the brachial plexus. A upper trunk, B, lower trunk, C, anterior cord, D, middle cord, and E, posterior cord. So a cervical bone uh, or a cervical rib can exert direct pressure on, on which part of the brachial plexus. So the cervical rib is simply a rib, an extra rib which develops in the cervical region and this condition uh, occurs in more in 0.5 percent of people 
so where you have an extra bone which develops in the cervical so most of these ribs affects the lower part of the of the brachial plexus so this is where the brachial plexus arise in the cervical region and then if you happen to develop an extra cervical rib in the cervical region there you are going to affect that bone or rib is going to affect the it is going to affect the lower trunk of the brachial plexus so the lower trunk is going to be affected so the correct answer for question 17 is b as we can see here the lower trunk is mostly affected by a cervical rib if at all it develops so we move on to question 18. so a groove posterior to scaling tubercle on the superior surface of the first rib lodges the a groove posterior to scaling tubercle on this post on the superior surface of the first rib lodges the a subclavian vein b subclavian artery c internal jugular vein and b brachiocephalic trunk e right common parotid artery so the correct answer for question 18 is b subclavian artery why because this is the muscle we're talking about which is the scalene muscle uh, and they are saying the groove on of uh, to the scalene tubercle on the first rib so on the first rib this rib here you are going to find a groove there where this muscle attaches now on its posterior on its posterior posterior surface so posterior which means posterior to this muscle there is a groove there where subclavian artery passes so the groove posterior to the scalene tubercle on the surf superior surface of the first rib lodges the subclavian artery so the correct answer is b as we can see there there is a groove for subclavian artery okay so we move on to question 19 which one of the following muscles is attached to the second rib a subclavius b scalenius medius c levator scapulae d scalenius anterior e scalenus posterior so which one among these muscle muscles is attached to the second rib so the one which is attached to the second rib here is the posterior scalene muscle this that muscle there so the middle and the anterior is attached to the first rib there as we can see but the posterior scalene muscle is attached to the second rib so it is the posterior scalene muscle which is attached to the second rib for the levator scapulae it is attached to the scapula the media part of the scapula the media border and this one it is attached to the uh, first rib and the clavicle okay so question 19 the correct answer is e as we have seen in this diagram here so we move on to question 20 the xiphoid process starts ossification at the a third year b second year c fifth month after delivery d eighth months of intrauterine life and e fifth month of the intrauterine life so the correct answer for question 20 is a third year after uh, a baby is born after three years that's when the xiphoid process which is which is simply part of the scap uh, part of the sternum the xiphoid uh the after the border of the sternum we have the 
uh, the body of the sternum then there is a bone which uh, ossifies down there that bone starts its ossification in the third year so the correct answer is a so thank you very much for watching this video don't forget to like if i told you like this video and subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and leave your comment please concerning this video in the comment section below